Hey guys and girls, welcome back to another beautiful video on this beautiful channel, on this beautiful day. What we're going to be talking about today is just uh, continuing on from what we did on the last example. We're going to go ahead and uh, go through all these things, whatever we, we have up here. And we're going to just dissect all of this and, and add a few things to it and make sure you, you get what's going on here. Because this is the start of the whole program. And then we'll add a little something just to uh, show you how you draw something on the screen. So let's just get started. In the last video, we included all these things and linked uh, SFML to this project. So just go and watch that video if you haven't already and make sure you know how to start a project in SFML. Now, um, SFML, of course, SFML, SFML, just say that 10 times quick. If you use this API, it's you'll, you'll notice it's kind of simple, it's nice, but you can make quite like complex stuff with it. You know, you can go ahead and make just about what you want, any kind of 2D game. And, uh, and yeah, so it's really useful, but it all starts with a render window. So the render window is like your basic blank sheet. It's your, it's the window that you're going to draw everything on. Now, what you usually do in games is that you have these steps. You have a window, you update your game here. So you're going to up, update a bunch of stuff and you're going to draw all the updated stuff. So what I mean by update is if you have a character or something, the first thing you do is you might want to check if if the user is pressing W and the character moves and then you update that character's position so it moved a bit in in the in in the computer like coordinates right and the numbers changed and then you go ahead and draw a sprite or whatever at that position of the the new position in the next frame to to show that character at that position and it just goes on in this little in this little loop here so that's your window, and it is kind of your basis for the whole, whole, uh, whole program here. Now, what we have here is a constructor for the window, which we call directly. Our window's name is window, to be simple. You can name it whatever you want. Now, video mode is sets the size of the window. I changed this a little bit so to make it a little bigger. Then you get the title. Then there's something called a SF style, and uh, style and then you can go ahead and do for example you can just keep it default it's going to be windowed mode but you can change that to whatever you saw you saw full screen and and stuff like that and then you have something called uh, a context settings so this is going to be for your anti-aliasing and other other kind of settings you need to put in there and it's really useful because especially anti-aliasing because jaggies and stuff around objects is really irritating so go ahead and remember that that you can set everything in in the window. Well, another good thing you can do in window for you guys with uh, really fast computers and computers you really care about and you don't want to break your graphics cards. What you can do is set frame rate limit so you don't go up to like 5,000 frames uh, a second and just burn it out uh, if that's even possible. But uh, yeah, you can go ahead and set the frame rate limit. Now this is really good. You can change it around, you can build your game around this, but if you don't hit 60, sometimes your game is going to slow down. So, and it, and it won't really work as you want it to at lower frames. You still want the game to work normally at lower frames. It's just going to look like it's lagging, right? But sometimes the game can become really slow instead of that hacky lag, right? That, that kind of jaggy lag. Instead of that, it gets really slow, and that's not what's something you want. So, to counter that, you do something called like you time each frame and then you multiply all your speeds and everything with that time so it's gonna it's gonna be frame rate independent the game and uh, and that's something we're gonna talk about and for that you need something called the SF clock and we're gonna be talking about that now if you remember we used using namespace std before you can use namespace SF as well to not have to use all this stuff here and uh, that really helps because you don't have to write all this extra stuff. Let's take that away. Um, and here we go. Example 02. We'll just name that 02. So that's our window and we created it using the constructor. Now we have a window created. We have a frame rate limit on the window. Now to the main loop which every game or almost every application has which is continuously running. So while the window is open, this returns a boolean. 
to check if the window is still open. While it's open, there is a event polling thingy for the window, which just means that uh, if you press a button or if something else happens, if you press the, uh, the X button on the window, it's going to send an event to um, to to this event handler basically and and it's gonna catch that and and then you can check in here like if, if the window is closed event type closed meaning the X button uh, it's gonna close the window for you and you can have other event types you can have if event dot type equals event button button or a keyboard key pressed and then you go ahead and uh, keep going with that like escape or something and then you can you can just close the window with a key or you can do something else I usually don't use this event polling thingy for the games WASD and stuff like that you can you can do if statements uh, to, for that instead I usually like that um, for keyboard handling this is just for like closing the window and stuff and getting mouse positions and mouse move and stuff like that uh, but yeah, and then you clear your window, which you have to do every frame. Imagine your every frame you're drawing something new, right? You don't want to draw on top of the old stuff and just make everything look weird. It's not going to be good. You want to clear the whole window and then draw a new frame. Everything in between here is going to be like you draw your character, you draw everything, everything you need. And then display is going to be, okay, I'm finished drawing, go ahead and display the window display the new frame basically so this this is the step here you draw draw everything and then you just yeah you have your frame and update like we talked about we, you might make a function for update and you're just gonna update all your character enemies everything you need up here so this is basically how a game works and then you have SFML on top of that for the window and how, how you you're gonna use that with the game now, if you wanna, if you want a practical example, we're gonna just make a a, a circle shape, and we're going to just go ahead and make that radius into uh, five, and then yeah, there we go, a circle shape, um, shape shape. 5f and we want to draw that circle shape so we're just gonna say window dot draw shape now it's gonna clear the window draw the shape and display it and then the next frame clear it again draw the shape again and display it so we do this because if we update the position it's gonna show the new position it's not gonna keep drawing on the same piece of paper imagine just drawing a bunch of circles after each other it's gonna look like a line right we don't want that we want only the circle to be drawn at the new position and the old position to be uh, destroyed basically just removed so if we go ahead and do this it should show us a circle but it might be black I'm not sure okay what happened here what happened here main already defined whoops I might have done oh whoops never mind there we go let's try that out so it's going to draw us a little circle up there. It's really small. That's the radius with 5. So let's make that 50. That's going to change things up a bit. We're going to get a bigger circle. There we go. And it always draws at 0, 0. So imagine there is a box around the circle. And that box's corner is 0, 0. And it's always going to have its origin there. So if you set the position, it's not going to be the center of the object. It's going to be the top left corner. Always remember that. It's really important. You can change the origin to the center, but then you're going to have to be uh, ready to play around with everything else because it's going to screw a bunch of other things up. So just keep it the way it is and just play around that. Uh, but yeah, you have your circle here. Now, what I want to show you is that the difference between clearing and drawing. If you don't clear it, what happens then? Okay, so we're clearing it. And what we're going to do in update here is we're going to say shape dot move. And then you, you got your X and you got your Y. So we wanted to move 0.1 F in. And I write the F afterwards because it's a float value. You don't have to, but then the compiler uh, has to, uh, what do you call it, convert that from a double to a float again. And that's that takes a bit, bit of uh, computation. So, and then 0. 
f in uh, in y. So if I do that, it's going to be moving to the right slowly. See, it's moving to the right really slowly. Really slowly. And this is because we're clearing the window, drawing it in the new position, clearing it again. What happens if we, we can do 0 0.3 though, make it move a little faster so you can see it better. See, it's moving a little faster. There you go. Okay, so what you want to do is if you remove this clear or just comment it out, what happens? What's the point of clear? Well, see, it's not clearing the old drawn paper. It's basically the same sheet of paper and we're just drawing something new on it. And it's going to keep doing that for, yeah, forever. And it's just going to never clear the window. Now, that's not something you want. So just make sure you have clear. Now, what you can do in here is you can uh, give it a color. You can say color red or you can you can specify the color yourself. But let's just say red. So what this is going to do is going to clear the window with a background color. So red. You can do this if you want. Um, you can do it transparent. You can clear any way you want. So this is basically a first example on how SFMO works and why we do the things we do here. I hope this helped you. Thanks for watching. Sorry for the little longer video. But uh, I think it's a good start for you guys to understand what's going on. So yeah, take care, work hard, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.